Are you good back there? I think it was out there.
to three grunts. But the sea turtles in this bay are considered juveniles and they don't all know how to count to three quite yet. So we sometimes get a random number. It looks like it'll come up for another bet here in just a moment. Uh, we'll give it another minute just to see what he's up to. Usually they head directly back down after their last breath. So here's another breath in just a second here. He's almost up. There he is. You guys will see he's got a fish on his belly. His tail, the fish tail is kind of sticking out backwards there. Uh, these are called remoras. They stick to the turtles and kind of eat when they find the extra food on them. So I think he will take another breath, but he's also slowly swimming down. They just usually quickly swim down when they're done, so I think he's going to take another breath here before he heads back down. We'll give him another moment to see what he's up to. He's going to come up right in the middle here for a final breath. There we go. And it's likely he's tucking straight back down. Yeah, you guys see how he keeps on paddling down. Dive in all the way back to the back to the bottom where he'll continue to eat until the end of the night. And then again, they sleep down there overnight before waking up again to eat the rest of the day. Stuff like being turtle, eating all day, sleeping all night, right? Being protected from even being touched. But again, hopefully their number is starting to come back up and he's coming here. of sea turtles from where you park your ship all the way to shore without getting wet, which is probably an exaggeration. Uh, but definitely tells me there were more turtles oh, yeah. We wouldn't even make that up.
We typically find that sort of like one big group light attracts more than a bunch of scattered lights. So if you guys just generally kind of hang in this corner of the bay for now. Also, we find that in the middle of the bay, the visibility is not quite as good as it is over here. But just hang out here for a minute or two. We'll see what notices us. In the meantime, we have a whole different noise. It's not the Marriott's steel drums, right? Uh, mostly tree frogs. We have a lot of types of tree frogs here and almost all of them make noise with the exception of my favorite tree frog, the mute tree frog. We've got a lot of frog types. One of the favorites is the cookie tree frogs. Cookie tree frogs are out at night but also especially after it rains. We've got that whistly noise kind of like they're saying. You guys might hear that whistling some nights. That's the cookie tree frog. Not a bird in the woods. Uh, the one in the background right now is called the white lip tree frog. Easy to identify, its upper lip is white. It looks like it put white lipstick on just its top one. But that doesn't mean you guys should be trying to kiss any of our frogs down here because some of them are toxic. Uh, we've got a Cuban tree frog. You guys can guess where that's from, right? Uh, the Cuban tree frog, obviously from Cuba, has a little bit of a toxin, but it's more um, that it just causes problems with your sinuses a little bit. Discomfort, right? <laughs> we have a cane toad here that's a little more toxic, especially if you have pets. Uh, you gotta watch out for those cane toads. You don't want your pets trying to eat them and stuff. Um, that can be a major one. But we'll give it just another minute. Sometimes the sea life here is shy and just takes a minute to kind of notice us. Otherwise, if we don't have luck in another minute or so, we'll just kind of continue on and see what's up ahead. Bird Bay here. Um, the beach is not a private beach. It's actually a public beach. All of our beaches here are public, if you guys didn't know that. Uh, it doesn't mean there's access from the land, so you still might have to trespass to get to this beach from the land, which isn't strictly legal. But you guys are welcome to go on any of the beaches if you swim up to them, kayak up to them. I think you can even like skydive down to a bunch of a uh, couple of the beaches here, and then you're totally fine to be there. I think it's 20 feet from the high tide line or to the tree line, whichever comes first. So the guys own beachfront property, plant a bunch of trees right up against the water, and the land behind it's yours, right? <laughs> so the U.S. Virgin Islands, because they are islands. We don't have a whole lot of native mammal species. We really only have 
been through a hurricane before. Ooh, a couple of us, man. Anybody been through three hurricanes? A couple of us, right? I went through five hurricanes just at Happy Hour today, so I got to all these, right? <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't be able to do this at the end of the night, but we do have our fair share of hurricanes here on the island. We're always watching for the next major one. They say every 20 years you might have a major hurricane. Uh, but we actually got two Category 5s back in 2017, so we should be good for another 40 years. That's how that math works. Uh, you guys will see previous damage of hurricanes up on shore here. There used to be a staircase, reinforced concrete, built into the rock. Uh, and it is no longer a staircase. It's a stage surge here. It's just so intense, it rips things out like that. My favorite example of previous hurricane damage is actually right up ahead here on shore. Well, the staircase to nowhere. It's just a staircase that drops off like 30 feet up. Um, that was from Hurricane Maryland back in 95. Now this staircase used to actually go down to a nice white sandy beach, but now the beach is rubble, so they didn't rebuild the staircase. Kind of makes sense now that the landscape has changed. They're not going to rebuild the same, right? We'll go a little further up ahead here. A couple more things you can check out. Fish so they're trying to catch these guys because it's about the largest fish they can swallow. 
There's another one out deeper in there. Jump away. They're like flying fish in that they skip across the water, but unlike flying fish, they're actually propelling themselves with their back fin the whole time and just skipping instead of kind of gliding, right? We go a little bit further up here, we got a landmark thing we can check out real quick. Now historically, the only opening to the open water from this bay was on the left there, that connection point that you guys can see, especially during the day. About a hundred years ago though, they dug out the connection point up downtown, between Hassel Island on our left and the remaining the connection right point on St. Thomas. I just Hassel jumped Island, into our that boat. dark mountain on the left, used to be a part of St. Thomas a hundred years ago, but they dug out the connection point, so now it's its own island. To protect this harbor, they used to have a fort here on shore that we can see the remains of now. Uh, but this fort used to actually run all the way around the fort. But this little section is all that's left. This fort used to have cannons in the windows. They're called murder holes because they would house an eight pounder, which describes the weight of the cannonball that they shoot out. And you guys will notice it's really low down because they could actually skip cannonballs on the surface of the water up here and hit the ship right in the hull, which made it sink faster, right? It was a really great system at the time. Estimates are between two and 300 sunken wooden ships in the bay. Uh, but since they were all wood at the time, not a lot is left. Just all that treasure, right? Now we're going to take a left-hand U-turn, kind of peel out here. There are some rocks up ahead, I'll point out here, right up here. But we're just going to avoid those by peeling out this way. We're going to go a little bit further out so we can get a good view of our downtown. Charlotte Amalia, or Charlotte Amelie, whichever you guys are accustomed to. Now when the U.S. bought the islands in 1916, they transferred over, copied over one of their maps incorrectly, started writing Charlotte Amelie, they wrote Charlotte Amalia. Um, so you'll hear both nowadays. I don't know if either is necessarily correct at this point. Here's uh, another needlefish, a little bit bigger of one heading out from us. We'll get a little closer to it, see if a uh, tarpon will notice, right? All right, just like a kayak length away from me here, we got one of these needlefish and the tarpon season. Oh, there it goes, right? It hopped and it got away for now right here on, on the top of the water. We'll see. Sometimes the tarpon go for them again, but usually the kayaks in their way make it uh, a little more gutsy for them, right? Oh, here he goes. There he goes. Hopping away from the group now. The tarpon sees him again. Here we go.
I didn't even document it. No one will believe it. I heard him. I didn't see him, but I definitely heard him like. <laughs> We had I didn't one that. That's what I thought of, yeah. Well, that's what I thought at first, too. And then I heard like something splash in the water. And <laughs> or splash away. Okay, if we're still good paddling, I'm waiting for a good. Mm hmm. Yep, credit moment. We had one that had ran into like the front of the boat. What? Way back when we had one that ran into the front of the boat. It like almost happened, but but it's clear that you had one. <laughs> All good. <laughs> <laughs> and jump right back into the ocean to become dinner. <laughs> Can you get some pictures? Hmm? Can you get some pictures? Of the boat? Or what? Oh, just in general. Yeah, I've got some of your back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> any of you? Did you did you flip the camera around and get any of you? No. Uh, I can't. It's food. too dark for me. Mm -hmm. Curiosity is to know how much we are getting back to run into somebody. Yeah. Good. Yeah. How much of this could actually be caught on camera? Thank you. 
Brooke's not abused. You said do. Do you have a stingray? Thank you. 
paddle over them if you want a good view of them. Next to them if you want to see them a little better. This is a large southern brown man. Usually with these, you'll see them in pairs. So there may be another one around here. in between all of us on the bottom. The guy they were saying you'll see a little white flash every once in a while, which is the edge of its wing coming up. Thank you. 
below me and now he's coming under you
Ben. Okay. 